thank you all for coming tonight to celebrate the life and art of Don Baum. My name is Sue Ellen Roca, and I'm the curator and director of exhibitions at Elmhurst College. When I describe Don to people, I refer to him as the empresario. He was so many things, an artist, an educator, an arts administrator, and a curator. He profoundly changed the landscape of art in Chicago and beyond. He was one of a kind, with amazing artistic sensibility, intellect, generosity of spirit, and an incredible fun-loving personality. Those of us who knew him will never forget his outrageous laugh. <laughs> he was important to the Elmhurst College collection in so many ways. During his tenure at the Illinois Arts Council as visual arts consultant, we acquired more than 20 works of art through the Illinois Arts Council Partners and Purchase Matching Grants Program. The wonderful painting by artist Gertrude Abercrombie was added to the collection through Don Baum's donation as executor of the Gertrude Abercrombie Trust. And two outstanding works, which I'm sure you've seen by Don, are an essential part of our collection. So it is fitting as an institution that we celebrate him. And on a personal level, as one who enjoyed the gift of Don's support and friendship, this evening has very special meaning to me. We think about him as an educator, as a curator, as an empresario, what Dennis Adrian called a bird dog for a new talent in Chicago art, an arts administrator, and an artist. He had a profound impact on the cultural life of our city. Profound is a word we might hear a lot tonight. And he helped convey the power and uniqueness of Chicago art to the world at large. And uh, I think it's really fitting that we, we uh, celebrate him and his uh, extreme importance to what we all do and what we're all interested in. And I want to just start out by uh, saying something about this place that we're in right now. Um, a few years ago, I'm, I'm always struck when I come here by what a spectacular collection it is, how beautifully curated it is um, in all ways. And a few years ago, there was a lot of talk about the need for a, a Chicago, a Museum of Chicago Art. And um, I think we already have one. It just happens to be located in Elmhurst. <laughs> and uh, I congratulate them and think we should put our hands together for uh, this spectacular collection. Uh, but I'm going to walk through a quick um, slideshow to get Don's images in our head while we uh, begin to talk about them. I thought it would be the appropriate thing to have to really be thinking about his, his work. <laughs> Stiddledwig, 1964. Decal Shadow Box, 1964. LBJ, 1964. It's a poster from the second Nonplussed Sum show, uh, which uh, Don was part of. And this is the poster from the classic Don Baum Says Chicago Needs Famous Artists, 1969, at the MCA. Shoe 4, 1980. Domus Maria, 1980. The House That Jack, 1981. Chambered Nautilus, 1982. Cage, 1982. Um, I'm going to introduce each of the panelists and their 
going to give us about a five minute, uh, some fi five minutes worth of thoughts, and um, then we're going to have a conversation. The house was also a great place because it was the incubator for the artwork, and my father's studio was in the, the garage and the coach house behind the house, and my mother's was in the attic. And, and going into those environments was um, like entering another world. Um, my mother would be surrounded with cut pieces of paper, and my father was surrounded by doll parts and, 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 and decals and driftwood. And, and, and what was really exciting for me was uh, the tools and, the, and, and learning how to use those, which was something that he enjoyed teaching me. So um, those, were, th those were special moments. But, uh, um, my mo some of my most intimate memories of my father uh, take place in the Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Uh, that's where he was born and raised and fled from, <laughs> but returned on a, an yeah. annual basis. And the reason that I'm talking about this is because I began thinking about um, the houses that he made. And in hindsight, I believe that it was a very personal experience that he was um, portraying. Uh, don't quote me, but I believe it was related to his reading A Hundred Years of Solitude in the 1980s. And that's where he got the name Domus. And I think he was exploring what home meant to him. He no longer lived in the house, the house, which my brother um, alluded to, the Frank Lloyd Wright house. He no longer lived with his family, his children. And I think he was searching for what that word meant for him, and he went back to the, his um, visual memories of the Upper Peninsula. Those early houses are made out of very old linoleum, and they look a lot like the shacks that we used to see in the UP, these tar paper shacks that he was fascinated by. And so I think that he was looking at that piece of himself and asking the question, Don was a good administrator. I think he enjoyed it. Uh, he helped other people. He helped other artists. Uh, he was like a, an administrator for the, for the whole art world. He was a crusader for art. He, he told me that he thought art was sacred. And uh, I think he meant that it was really the act of trying to make it that was the important thing. And um, we, we talked about psychoanalysis a lot, too. and. Uh, I think you thought of them in a very similar way, that this was the path to enlightenment. I think some of the older people here will remember that we only had about three galleries in Chicago in the old days. And competition was fierce. And when I say fierce, it meant artists weren't very nice to each other. Uh, that was changed by Don Baum, personally. He, he just was a one-man army to Switch that thing around. Look at the setting tonight. It's amazing to me. I drew a portrait in, in 08 of Don, and uh, I was just thinking about him. And, and it's him uh, sitting in his Wassily chair, just looking like he always did, and probably listening to Billie Holiday, because that's what he always did. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And those funny glasses, of course. <laughs> I knew Don first as an inspiring teacher. His assignments were so creative. He drew talented students to him and motivated even those students who were taking art as an easy elective. Many of those Roosevelt grads went on to MFA programs, to teaching careers of their own, and to productive lives as artists. His curiosity was enormous and Catholic, and I don't mean in the religious sense. He was interested in everything from classical antiquity to fashion and popular imagery. I will never forget the shoe show at the Folk Art Museum in New York that we saw together. It was as meaningful as a visit to the Louvre or the Uffizi. It was so much fun to go anywhere with Don. And I was teaching a course um, that he had actually suggested to me um, about women and art in the 70s, when that, that was a really hot topic. And he said, just remember, all art is about folds and protrusions. 
And I, I can't tell you how often I have found that to be true and how often I have repeated that. So, and I hope you will too. I'm sure Don would be happy if you did. Very wonderful. Don Baum had a great laugh. It was conspiratorial and encouraging. It was bursting out of delight and curiosity and amazement. No one who has ever heard it can forget it. He believed in the importance of culture, but did not stay in the heavy seriousness of it or focus on the struggle of the artist. For Don, it was about the joy of doing things. I love the title of the basement show at the Museum of Contemporary Art. And we saw the poster earlier. Don Baum says, Chicago needs famous artists. A takeoff on a famous advertisement of the day. It could have had a heavy title like, Chicago, the next generation. But planning a show with and by Don was fun. As Art Green said, he raised the, the laugh quotient. Don had a simple logic. If you ask 30 people to be in a show, you have 30 people that come to the opening, plus their friends and mothers. <laughs> <clears throat> and it was in this way that he created an atmosphere and an audience around the High Park Art Center. It was from suggestions from artists that he started to make shows of just four to six artists. After a group was selected, he was open and encouraging to the artists to respond to the possibilities of the exhibition. From the artists came the titles of the show. From the artists came the flowered linoleum put up on the walls. From the artists came the collective products that the artists uh, liked to produce, comic books, sets of postcards, or decals. These shows had a strong response that was a surprise to everyone. It was important to the artists that they were allowed to show several years in a row. It gave them a stronger identity as artists. Don loved playing with names and identities of artists. At a, very large at a very loud party, he once introduced me to a confused but interested visiting curator as an ex-Jesuit, <laughs> <laughs> which I am not, nor have ever been. <laughs> <laughs> the Sun Times pronounced him the godfather of art. Just tonight, um, Laurie said he was the great matchmaker. Sue Ellen calls him the impresario. Don Baum had a great laugh. I want to thank John and and. Charles and Susan and Phil and Maria and Ben, Bill and Kerrig for the wonderful things that you shared about Don. And I want to thank again everybody for coming. Thank you so much. It's just really, I think, been a wonderful celebration. Thank you.